Hi, it's Ryan Brown. I'm on the NAB Show floor 2017. Uh, we're showing off our new Sumo 19. Think of this as kind of like a Shogun Inferno, Shogun Inferno technology. As I like to say, the bigger brother. If you look on the back side, we're going to have quad coming in up to 1080 60. You're going to be able to have a split screen. I don't have that demo on here, but we have another station that you could check that out. You have all your Atom OS that you're used to seeing. You can see if we take it to Rec 709, we're basically at 100 IRE, but when we come into Atom HDR, we open that right up and you can see how much range we have on our image, which is amazing. Some of the cool things that you're going to see specifically with the Sumo that you're not going to see on any other product, we actually have speakers. We have 2.1, so there's two firing below. We have a little sub in the back. Uh, we have all these beautiful uh, quarter 20 and mounts that we can take and bring other things into our workflow here. So you might actually put a camera on here. Maybe you're putting some other devices that you want to piggyback on here, which is pretty cool. If I turn this around, you can see right here on the side, uh, our other units, the SSD is going to be kind of on the back. This is actually enclosed. Opposite side here, what you're going to see is you've got a remote cable. So we work with X-Rite. You can probe these monitors and keep them in calibration over time. Uh, we also have a headphone jack, as I said, speakers, so we could crank that up. You might be able to hear that. We've got some speakers going on there. Right now, you're looking at some material that shot on uh, Sony RAW. So we're obviously uh, in Atom HDR, Sony S-Log3, and Cinema Gamut. If we bring that back down, you can kind of see what you're looking at in Rec. 709 compared to HDR. We have all your typical focus assist type tools. So you've got your edge peaking, zebras, false colors, blue only. We have different crop modes, so you can put like 69, 240, 235, 19, and so on, 18543, for example. We can go ahead and change the colors too, like say, in our different modes here. This is a demo, so I don't actually have that to show you. On the back side, you can see we have a fan to keep it cool. Some of the new things that you're gonna see as I was talking about, this is like a little sub two speakers firing down below. We have actual connections on the device now for XLR input and output, whereas some of our other ones you'll see like an adapter hanging off the side. So that's a nice addition. We have your standard four pin for battery, so you can do like either a V lock here, right here with the mount, or what we call our uh, bat wings, and do dual V locks or AB or whatever that happen, whatever batteries you happen to be using. Uh, standard Visa mount. So as you can see, we're using a, a, Ma a Matthews uh, Visa mount. What I like to do is uh, take something like this straight to uh, my edit suite, so I'll set something up on my desk, and I can just take the uh, monitor basically out, put it in your Pelican or whatever you might be using, and just uh, take it around to the director's monitor, so it's very flexible. Let me go ahead and turn this back around here. As you can see, we have these mounts all around, so I'm sure people are going to find really cool uh, solutions to mount various things. So on the back side, as I said, this is like the Shogun Inferno. We've got quad coming in, so you've got 1080, 60. We're actually going to be able to switch on this device. Uh, you're going to be able to touch on the screen. When you see the red box, that means you're recording. When you tap another one, it's going to be a green box. Tap it again, then you're switching, and that's going to be red. So I'm actually right now coming in on our 12G. There's another one that right next to it that's the output. And you have sync, so if you have you know, a jam, if you want to jam this together with other devices, HDMI 2.0, so whether you're bringing in, say, a GH5, uh, you could go ahead and go all the way up to 4K60. If you're doing something like an FS series camera for RAW, you can come out 12-bit linear RAW directly into our 12G port and record up to 2K, 240 frames a second. I actually have a little clip on the other side um, that's all the way up to 240. You could do 120 frames at Cinema DNG and 4K30, so raw straight to raw, which is really cool. So here's a little clip of me just doing some fun stuff, skateboarding, uh, doing some quick tests. So basically, this is FS700 raw. We're coming straight out of the camera, 12-bit linear raw, right off the sensor, and we're going to ProRes. So this, hap this happens to be 240 frames. We could also do 4K60 frames. Again, uh, Cinema DNG, I've got some examples here. So basically when you're doing Cinema DNG, you're going to end up with one root folder and a wave inside of an audio folder and another folder with all your Cinema DNG clips. So you can touch every clip or bring it into Premiere Pro, for example, 
grab the folder, drop it through the timeline, and you have a full clip that you can edit on, which is super cool. And uh, if you back up a little bit, you're going to be able to see that we've kind of have this laid out to what you typically see in a DIT situation, your data wrangling. So what I'm doing right now is I'm playing back some HDR footage off of a Sony RAW camera. Go ahead and turn a couple things off here. All right, let's clean up the image. So typically on my DIT cart, my client's gonna wanna be able to see a clean full res shot on my screen. We're looping back out of the 12G into our Shogun Studio. So these are basically like dual Shogun Studios. And I can have my waveforms down here, my RGB, my Luma. Below that, we've got a G-Tech. So we've got our RAID. We've got our LTO for NLogic. So we have our software here. Basically, we're gonna take our disk out here we're going to dock it into our provided docking station, or if you have your own solution, you're welcome to use that. You're going to see your clips in our bin here. You're going to select all your clips, drag it to the green, and it's going to go ahead and start backing it up on all the devices. So that's kind of a breakdown of uh, how this all works. So do custom looks. So for instance, you can do up to eight different slots of your looks cube files. And as I tap around, you can see how the looks are changing. Now, right now, this is all visual, but if you want to actually bake this in your recording, you're going to hit this little button that says, look, that red dot, and that's going to actually bake it in your footage. So if you want to hand it off to your client right away, um, that's the way to do that. You can pass the look to say like an OLED, all right, so your HDR monitor. Another thing that's super cool, let's go ahead and come back to here. That's going to be a little bit easier to see. You can do a review look, so you can see the before and after without the look and with the look. So that's pretty neat. Let's go ahead and take that off. Let's go back to Adam HDR there. So that's pretty much a, a rundown of Sumo 19. Um, thank you very much for coming through, and we hope to see you again next time.